Hi, today I'm going to show you adding some shading to the white cloud that I've put in the sky of the print. Now, if you watched my film yesterday, you'll have seen me mixing up transparent white to put a flat layer um, onto the cloud, a wash of colour over the cloud. Now I've done that, and you will see that wash of colour at the end of this, but I'm going to add a shading now. So the wash of white is already on the cloud and everything's set up on my press to print and I'm going to show you putting the shading on because I'm going to do it a little bit differently from the way that I put the deeper blue shading across the whole of the sky. When I did that I wanted very much to have what I refer to as a bokashi, a perfect shading or bleed of colour. This time I can be a little bit more painterly in my approach because this is a cloud that's moving and I want it to have a little bit more of a sort of looser texture if you like. So what I've done is I've prepared myself a roller and you can see here that um, this is one of those Japanese rubber rollers that I was showing you in the film about choosing rollers and I've put some white ink on about two thirds of it. So it is going to give me a sort of a, a bleed like the blue. Um, and this time I've used opaque white ink. If you saw my previous film where I was mixing the white ink for the cloud, it was transparent. Now I want a little bit of opaque ink just to pick up some of the detail. So what I'm going to do is to take a little bit more of a painterly approach and I'm going to just catch that ink down. So you can see instead of trying to be super careful to get everything even, this time I'm really allowing the roller just to drop colour in places Okay, to give me what I want. So edge is quite important there. So what I'm doing is, as I get to the edge of the cloud, I'm actually tilting the roller to deposit and press the ink into the edges to make sure that the edge of the cloud has got a, a smooth layer of ink. So the, the amount of pressure you use on the roller on the lino when you're inking like this makes a big difference. If I just dab it down, then you get almost a stippled effect from the ink because it's just dropping the ink onto the lino. If I start rolling, it smooths thing out, things out. That's what rolling does, it smooths out the ink. So drop it down and you get stippled effect. And then working the edges a bit more at an angle works the ink in. Now what it does do is to deposit ink into the dead space as well. And that's inevitable. Don't worry about that if that happens to you. It's not because you've cut it wrong, it's just a byproduct of inking. So let me put my roller down. So all I'm going to do to get rid of that is just to have a little wipe. And the clever thing is to remember to have a little wipe before you print. It's so easy when you are editioning to be in the swing of it and just miss a step like wiping. And now I'm using my finger to check that I have no ink anywhere on the dead space. Fingers are great for just getting rid of any little bits of ink. Okay, so hopefully um, you can see this is a much looser application of, of the shading um, to get a bit more movement. So let me bring that down. And I'm sticking with three pieces of card because remember we're using this very delicate washi paper and I don't want to crease it. Now, with this technique, every print in the edition is going to be slightly different. It's impossible for the prints to be identical when you ink like this. 
personally, I don't care. I think it's part of the way that I work. It's inevitable. And I have never had a problem with any gallery or any client worried that the prints are subtly different from each other. So I do this and I don't worry about, about it. Okay. So let me put this down on a piece of white card so that you can now see it. So now I've got the print out and on the white card, hopefully you can see that cloud really clearly. And if you look, you can see the body of it is quite transparent and the blue is, is sort of coming through. And then around the edges, you have that brighter white in a slightly more random effect. It's very subtle, but I, I kind of like that. The, ho the whole point of using this Kitakata paper is that it's very delicate and it has a kind of a glow. Washi is an interesting paper um, in that it has a sort of sheen and a glow about it. So it's perfect for this translucency and this translucent sky. So... Um, I'm not going to add any more to the sky. I've got everything that I need there. I'm going to keep it fairly minimal. And the next thing that I have to decide is how I handle the two far hills in this picture. So when you join me again, I'll have the sky printed and I'll be starting to, and, and I'll have cut away the cloud and I'll be starting to work on those hills. And I do have a bit of news for you about this Kitakata paper from Awagami factory. I've been working with the Select and with the Deckled paper, made a big thing about that, but it is now available on a roll. So um, if you don't want to work with the Deckel and you want to work in different sizes, then you can get this from Awagami factory in a roll as well. So... I look forward to seeing you next time and thank you very much for watching.